Hello dear students, welcome to my channel. This is Dr. Hadi here. Today's topic is comparison between the terms as mentioned on the whiteboard coagulation, precipitation, denaturation, flocculation. As I told you in my previous video lecture that we will be having a video lecture in which we will compare these four terms because students feel some confusion whenever they see these terms because they are so closely related that it is very difficult to separate them from one another but in biochemistry we will help you to separate them and let you understand what is the the, sep the separation point between these related terms but if you want to have a clear concept on, on these four different terms I need you to go back to my video on the topic precipitation of protein because today I can't repeat the precipitation in detail because I have already discussed that topic uh, I, I think in 30 to 40 minutes lecture it is so you please watch that precipitation topic and then come back and if you have already watched that video lecture precipitation then welcome because why this topic is very important it, it, it the reason is that if someone asks me what is coagulation i will say precipitated protein is called coagulation wow if someone will say what is flo flocculation i say precipitated protein is called flocculation if someone will say what is denature i will say precipitated protein is called denature oh my god so this precipitation is so important I mean, you can use the word precipitation to justify these three terms. However, there is some difference that we will discuss. But this is very important. A precipitation is when... Oh my God, I just want to check that mic. Thank God. Because sometimes I complete a lecture of 40-50 minutes and then and later on I come to know. I find it. Oh my God, the, the mic is off. So it happened to me so many times, that's why I'm looking at mic time to time frequently. Precipitation, in a very uh, summary wise, if you have a beaker and there are polypeptide protein dispersed in water in a solvent, let's suppose this is water, solvent, I make a colloidal solution. The word precipitation means that these polypeptide chain come close together, either they uh, settle at the bottom, and they become like this. Here, they settle here at the bottom. They leave interaction with water, water remain here, and this condition we call it precipitation of protein. So this was, that was discussed in detail. Now, come here, the denaturation. One more video lecture only solely on the, on the topic denaturation has been already delivered and uploaded that video. The denaturation, you can also go back, see that topic. It, denaturation means if a protein has a secondary structure, mean if it is like a structure having like this, or it has tertiary structure, and if it loss these structure loss of loss of secondary or tertiary structure whatsoever the loss of this structure will be called as denaturation uh, once a protein is denatured its chemical properties as well as physical properties are both changed fine so now now we will come to that the two terms coagulation and flocculation when I start with coagulation, in coagulation you will see the word denaturation as well as precipitation. Means when you precipitate a protein and you get a semi-solid viscous precipitate. So when, when a protein is precipitated and the protein is what? Semi-solid, not solid. 
So this is the first condition. This terms the word semi-solid separate coagulation from precipitation because in precipitation we did not discuss either it is a semi-solid or solid. Maybe they are, they are both solid and semi-solid. But if if a press once a protein is precipitated and it is semi-solid, we call it coagulation instead of precipitation. However, you can call it precipitation. But we are just um, making our concept clear. Then, then irreversible denaturation. Here we have denaturation. A denaturation can be irreversible means once a protein become changed it will never be reversed means it cannot convert back into A. Once a protein is denatured it can't be renatured. This is called irreversible and when a protein is denatured let's suppose this is a normal protein it is denatured and if a denatured protein come back to its original position we call it reversible or renaturation so coagulation can also be defined in terms of denaturation we, we have just discussed coagulation in terms of precipitation now in terms of denaturation if a denatured protein is reversible uh, sorry irreversible this, this is called irreversible. So when a protein is denatured and which type of denaturation? Irreversible. Irreversible de denaturation of protein is also called as coagulation. That is why I, I feel that, that that coagulation is the uh, what we say hybrid of that denaturation and the precipitation. Denaturation if it is irreversible irreversibly denatured protein is called as coagulation i will tell you some more points as well and if the precipitate is semi-solid viscous we can call it coagulation now the question is that can we call all proteins co uh, coagulated proteins or can we call all protein denatured this is a very important question. So the answer is all proteins can be denatured. I mean, you can you can add that statement. All proteins can be denatured. Fine. But you can't add the sentence all protein can be coagulated. No, this is wrong. Some proteins can be coagulated. So we use the word coagulable protein. Coagulable protein. It means all coagulated protein can be called denatured, but all denatured protein cannot be called coagulated protein. I hope you understand. Devise the video, reverse it, and listen it again. What I said. This was the third point. Coagulation, coagulable protein and non-coagulable coagulable protein. Those protein that can't be coagulated, I mean they can't undergo coagulation, they are called as non-coagulable protein. And then the, here is a test that we use the word heat coagulation test. You know, there is a protein called albumin, it's present in our blood, and the albumin protein, albumin, is present in our blood. It usually can't enter the urine but in some pathological condition the albumin protein enters the urine so then we want to check the presence of that protein because we, we can't see that protein in urine by our naked eye so we need a test in order to uh, confirm the presence of albumin in urine we perform heat coagulation test albumin is a protein so we will give heat to urine the, the oral urine will be given will be heated and if the albumin is present in in, in the urine it will coagulate it 
and once it is coagulated it can be easily identified easily ident identified so with that we use the word heat coagulation test okay so we are done with the coagulation uh, term now come to the next flocculation that flocculation term which you can see it comes from the word precipitation once again because in the definition you can see there's precipitation of protein at isolytic ph when well, we already know very well what is mean by precipitation now if a protein is precipitated how when at isoelectric ph now i, I have to tell something about isolytic ph that pH at which a protein has equal number of positive or negative and negative charges mean that pH at which a protein is neutral means it is uh, it is neither having overall positive charge or overall negative charge because usually we have protein that have overall negative charge or we have protein that have overall positive charge only but it depends upon the pH De depends upon the pH different proteins have dif different pH at which they get either positive charge or negative charge so there is a specific pH for every protein at which the protein is almost neutral no po means positive charge is there negative charge is also there but they are equal number three positive three negative four positive point overall they will cancel the effect of each other so we will consider them as a neutral molecule so that ph at which a protein is neutral is called as isoelectric ph now if you precipitate a protein at isoelectric ph because you can precipitate a protein at other ph at a ph other than isoelectric ph so at isoelectric ph if you precipitate it then you will use the word flocculation and remember that must be a semi-solid mass so i have already discussed with you if it is a semi-solid we use uh, if it is a semi-solid then it will be coagulation sorry if it is semi-solid it will be coagulation and for flocculation it must not be semi-solid then in coagulation we are we are having precipitated protein here we also have precipitated protein but here we can't use the word uh, pH isoelectric pH in here the word isoelectric pH is necessary so this is the first difference between coagulation and flocculation one more uh, when we take a reversible method of flocculation let's suppose let's suppose we have a protein let's suppose this is a a protein and um, it is precipitated let's suppose at isolytic pH and when it is precipitated if look at that if it is reversible if it is reversible we can call it flow Q lum we can uh, call it flocculum and the process can be called as flocculation because reversible the condition the word reversible is necessary if the protein that you have is precipitated let's suppose and it is unable to reverse you, you can't use the word flocculation then for flocculation the protein which is precipitated must revert back to its original original position that that, that is necessary if it can't revert you can't use the word flocculation it will be simply precipitation so within the word precipitation a precipitated protein can be called flocculated if it is reversible okay i'm enjoying looks like you people are also enjoying one example is the casein casein is a protein uh, in 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 milk that is called milk protein and when you adjust let's suppose this is milk okay and you will change the ph you know in milk 
as lipid is there as well as protein is there and the protein in the milk is called as casein when you change the pH means bring it up to 4.6 up to this is called isoelectric pH pi for the casein what will happen here the protein will be precipitated at this pH and when a protein is precipitated it will be separate from uh, from the milk uh, there is a word called as curding of milk you, you, you might have heard the word curd curd curding of milk and usually it happen with uh, bacteria with the presence of bacteria the presence of bacteria in milk cause curding means some kind of precipitation of the protein because bacteria as in in um, a, 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 a chemical substance called lactic acid the bacteria produce that lactic acid and lactic acid changes the ph it bring the ph from alkaline level down to the acidic level 4.6 so we we can say that now the protein inside milk will be precipitated so we are done with precipitated but now, now you can add the word flocculation you can say uh, the protein in milk is precipitated good fine i will give you three marks out of five if you say the protein is precipitated and we can use the word flocculation has occurred or the, or the protein is occurred it's flocculated protein i will give you five out of five marks in the semester exam so now this was done with the casein and that was more what the most important point is this what is that if you provide heat let's suppose this is the milk protein and it is separated from the milk cutting has occurred you can call it flocculum okay fine if you provide heat and before that we we had not discussed any word of heat now if you provide heat to, to, to the protein which protein uh, flocculated protein if you provide heat then that protein will be called as coagulum means coagulation has started why because if you give heat if you provide heat it will change irreversibly because up to flocculum there is a chance of reversibility when you provide heat the, the the chance of reversibility is ended and it can't be reversed it is now irreversible so the flocculum is called now coagulum if you provide heat oh so inside flocculation once again we got coagulation and that is so interesting so lovely so beautiful topic that all these three are related with the precipitation and very minute small points separate them from the precipitation i hope you enjoyed the video like video and if you uh, enjoyed give us a like not give us a smile take care bye bye